Hello everyone and welcome to this post-processing tutorial. Um, for this sunrise shot I took in the burn in County Clare. So basically what, what people were asking me on Instagram was how I blended a pre-sunrise sky with a post-sunrise foreground. So essentially how I took an image of the sky before the sun rose and blended that with an image taken after the sun rose. So when I had all this lovely light in my foreground and also when I had the best light in the sky before the sun rose and I'm going to show you how to do that now it's very easy we're going to use a luminosity mask and to get a nice clean blend so let's look at the raw files um, no that is not a mistake I did not accidentally put my hand in front of the lens um, the reason I done that is to block out the sun so that I had no flaring in my foreground if we look at this file here you can see I had a lot of ugly flare around here because the sun was just too bright it was up at that stage and it was just flaring all around my foreground so the way I counteract that is by blocking it I'm in my so basically put my hand over the sun and blocking it so that I get no flare in the foreground okay and this is my sky so this was taken about I suppose five minutes just the sun was just starting to peak but the color was still there so the sun wasn't fully up yet and this was after the sun rose when I had that lovely light okay so I'm going to show you how I blended these two so hold on two of them right click go to edit and open as layers in Photoshop okay so now that we have the two of them open in Photoshop uh, just let me make, make them a bit bigger here now so the first thing we're going to do is align the two layers Okay, so all the two of them, so hold and shift and just click both layers, that selects the both of them, go to edit, auto align layers, click OK. And that just ensures that we have no movement in between, as you can see the ball right here, there's no movement in between the shots. Okay, so now I need to clean up this shot in terms of getting rid of this big hand that's stuck in the middle of the frame. So all I do to do that is select the paintbrush, white paintbrush, opacity at 100 and just paint out my hand there. And I'll explain why now because basically when we want to select the sky using the luminosity mask, everything that's white, so basically everything that's, that's light grey to white will be selected and everything that's kind of dark grey to black won't be selected. So that's why I painted out my hand here. Very easy, like that, um, and that's it. Okay, don't worry about the rest of it. That's fine. That'll all be selected. So now we're ready to start blending. So when I'm exposure blending, I use Jimmy McIntyre's uh, Raya Pro 3.0 uh, panel and Instamask. But if you don't, so that is a fantastic piece of software. Um, if you don't have that, that's no problem. I'm going to show you how to do it now. Okay, so. Firstly, with our bright exposure at the bottom or dark exposure on top, hold Alt or Option and click the layer mask symbol here, okay? And that puts a black mask over our top layer, our darker exposure, which basically makes it visible. So I'm now going to go um, to a curved layer. And basically what this curved layer is going to do is, is that it's going to house our luminosity mask itself, okay? So go to image so with the mask selected go to image apply image and select ok so if those settings are all the same click ok now we've created a mask within this layer itself ok next we have to adjust the mask so that we get a good selection of the sky and actually select the sky itself ok so again alt or option click on the mask and that will convert to the black and white now we're going to hit control and L or command and L and this brings up this channels layer here and what this does is it allows us to adjust the mask intensity so remember I said everything from dark grey to black won't be selected and everything from light grey to white will be selected so that's why I'm bringing my highlights up here and bringing down my mid-tones and yeah that's fairly good I think so even if a part of this is selected we can just mask it out afterwards so I'm going to click OK right 
Now all I have to do is hold control or command, and click the mask. You can see there's a symbol coming up there. And you can see the marching ants. And what those marching ants symbolize is basically the selection itself. I don't want to see them, so just hit control and H, command and H to hide them. And now we have a selection made of our sky. I've, I've, all I've done is hidden the ants. I haven't deselected it. So finally, this is important. Click the black mask. Get a white paintbrush. Settings the same as mine up here. And paint in that sky. Really gently. Oh. And that looks quite well. Nice and natural. No haloing around the boulder or anything here, as you can see. It's a clean, natural blend. And then just combine them all into one layer. So Shift, Control, Alt, and E. And there you go, into one layer itself. I do apologize about the uh, nasally voice. Um, it's PK season fever here now at the moment, and I'm about as blocked up now as I've ever been, so <laughs> apologies. Um, yeah, that's the blend done, folks. Uh, what I would do next is convert it to a smart object, go to filter, and camera raw filter. Basically, you can do all your color corrections here then, or if you prefer, what you could do is just hit Control and S, and that'll save it. And it'll bring it back into Lightroom for you as well. So here's the image back in Lightroom. Now, for in terms of color correction, I think what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna crop it. I'm gonna go for a five by seven crop, just to bring it in a bit more. Um, I've warmed it up a bit. Okay, so I'll just give it a bit of warmth. Contrast, I want to reduce the blacks here because I want to really emphasize these black areas in here because that'll really bring out the light parts when I paint in a bit. Bring up our shadows. So next I'm gonna get a grad filter. Graduated filter. Bring down my highlights, my shadows, my blacks and that. And drag that down for the top of the sky. And drag it up for the bottom. And that's a technique I use just to frame the image a bit better. So basically you're darkening the top and bottom of the image just to draw the eye more to the center here itself. Um, I intend on doing a separate tutorial on the HSL slider specifically. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here on them. But they can be a fantastic tool to add contrast to an image without actually touching the contrast slider itself. Finally, bit of magenta to my highlights like that. Bit of vibrancy. Now one thing I want to do is paint in a bit of dapple light here. So I'm gonna get an adjustment brush, up the shadows and up the highlights. And just paint in like that. Areas where the light was hitting it. Looks quite nice. I just I'm looking at it there now, the orange does seem a bit too so this is the beauty of the HSL slider. I can target colours individually or I can get this little man here and select it. As you can see the orange slider moving there. So you could target the colours individually themselves. That's a bit better. Just it was just a touch too too saturated. I don't like my colours overly saturated. Finally, add a bit of vignette. And there you go. That is very quick colour correction done on it, but it's near enough what I would have done anyway, you know. Um, the primary thing I want you to take out of this is the exposure blend. So, there's the initial image, well, with the hand taken out of it, the sky blended in, and that's the image then, with a bit of corrections done. So, 
hopefully you found that helpful um, I plan to do more processing tutorials on different bits and pieces but this was just to show you how you blend the sky in the foreground shots particularly your gold hour okay so thanks for watching folks and uh, I'll see you again soon